Hey, today I'm going to be fixing four of my followers' serves as recently I put a request out on my Instagram broadcast channel asking you to send in videos of your serves for me to break down and analyze. And so a big thank you to everybody that sent in videos as it takes a lot of courage for you to opt into posting your videos online. Now, sadly, I could only fit four serves into this video. So I've picked four serves that have very common traits that I see when I'm working with my players. I'm pretty certain that everyone watching this video will resonate with at least one of these players and so in turn we'll pick up some tips let's get into it now all four of these players sent me an email in along with their videos explaining what they wanted to get out of their serve and all of them wanted to focus primarily on control and accuracy which for most players is a really good starting point however when I looked at the four serves they are all gonna achieve this in a slightly different way and although power isn't a main priority in this video the technical tips and drills that I'm gonna show you will also help you with efficient power so first up we've got Pat and what Pat says that he struggles with is changing direction on his serve. Now the first thing that you'll notice when you see Pat serve is he has a super fast arm and definitely doesn't lack power on his serve. Now I'll talk about this a little bit later as well as a couple of the other players actually struggle in this area slightly but Pat looks like a very natural thrower. I imagine that he could launch a ball over that far fence and this gives you a huge advantage when it comes to serving as the serve itself is just a throw motion but what you'll notice when you look at Pat's serve is pretty much all of his power comes from his upper body although he does use his legs to get up to the ball if you look more closely he's only driving off one leg his front leg from his platform position he actually lifts his back leg quite early stands on his front leg and almost hops up to the ball now he kind of gets away with this because he's athletic and he's got that really quick arm and utilizes his upper body pretty well the downside is if you don't use your legs effectively on the serve and all of your power comes from your upper body you really lack control as if everything's coming from your arm it's very very difficult to have that finer control at contact whereas if you can initiate the power from your bigger muscle groups and your lower body and torso you can be slightly more controlled over what the racket's doing above your head and in turn that's going to help with accuracy and so most of the time when it comes to improving serves i always look at what the legs are doing first before i get to the upper body now i've got a few great drills that can help you with your leg work and your loading but i'm going to go through those after we look at our next server as he has a very similar problem now next up we've got tom and if you take a look at tom's legs first of all he has a very similar trait to pat but it's a lot more subtle Tom actually brings his back foot up to the front foot like a pinpoint stance, but he doesn't actually plant that back foot into the ground. Again, just like Pat, he's hopping from his front leg to get up to the ball. This is really limiting the amount of power you're getting from the ground, meaning that you've got to do an awful lot of work with your upper body, which we can see with Tom isn't quite as easy. I am going to cover the actual throwing mechanics within the next two serves, so stay tuned for that. But let's stay focused on the legs at the moment, as I honestly feel that this is going to make the biggest impact to Tom's serve. Now, it really doesn't make a difference whether you have a platform stance like I do, keeping your feet apart as you load, or if you have a pinpoint stance, bringing your feet together. In both of those stances, more of your body weight should be loaded on your back leg. This is because our back leg is what drives our hip up and into the serve and it's driving the hip that initiates the power on your serve now you kind of want to have a 60 40 split when it comes to loading that weight 60 percent on your back leg and 40 percent on your front leg this can be a little bit more difficult on the pinpoint stance but it's still important but what you'll notice with pat and with tom's serve is both of them have zero percent on their back leg and when everything's coming from the front leg it's very very difficult to get that hip to rotate when all of your weight is only loaded on your front leg you're not just reducing your power by half but nearly 60 percent as we want more of that weight on our back leg now as i said it is tougher to do with a pinpoint stance but a good pro for you to watch is ben shelton as he really exaggerates loading on that back leg with his pinpoint stance but regardless here are a few drills that can help you to develop that feeling of loading more on your back leg the first exercise is very very simple and you don't even need a tennis ball for this one and you're just going to practice jumping into the court from your normal stance so if you've got a platform stance you'll start with your feet in your stance position here you're going to jump up as high as you can and you're going to land on your front leg inside the court so practice this for some repetitions 
just to get you used to driving with both legs and getting that hip to turn so that you're landing on your front leg here. This is also a good one for your landing stability as well. So practice holding this position here with good balance on each jump. This can be done with a pinpoint stance too. Just start with your feet together, jump and land. Progress this onto using your racket. Now you can go straight into your full motion if you feel comfortable like this. Or if you want to start from a half serve position, this can be a little bit easier just to get used to that feeling of driving your back leg into the floor. Now, this is gonna feel super awkward as both of you are so used to driving from your front leg, but putting the time into this is definitely going to pay off. Now, this next one is gonna feel even more uncomfortable as we're gonna exaggerate how much weight we put on our back leg. We're gonna see if we can hit a serve starting only on our back leg and landing on our front leg. I mean, that felt uncomfortable for me. It's not ever going to feel normal, but again, it's just getting us more used to loading on that back leg. This drill is a good one, even if you feel like you are using both legs on your serve, as it can exaggerate that feeling of loading on your back leg. Next up, you can go back to both feet, but starting with an abbreviated serve. So if you have a platform serve, it will look like this. And if you have a pinpoint serve, you'll actually start here with both feet together. Oh, that was quite nice. The reason I've abbreviated it is it's gonna be incredibly difficult for you to think about loading your back leg within the full timing of your service motion. And so by abbreviating the serve, we can really focus on loading these legs before we then bring it back into your full action. So next up, we've got Pablo, who, as you can see, has a pinpoint stance and actually loads both of his legs to drive up to the ball. One thing for Pablo to be careful of is that he's not falling into his serve. You'll notice that he's actually leaning quite far forwards before he pushes up and into the court. It's only a minor thing, as it's actually good that you're getting up and into the court, but just make sure you're actually loading. But what I wanted to focus on a little bit more on Pablo's serve is actually what his racket arm is doing. As you'll notice at the back of Pablo's swing, this racket drop happens quite early and it looks fairly forced. Now, this is a really, really common trait that I see with players, especially for players that are quite visual learners. Players that watch lots of pro serving or even online tutorials. Sometimes we see the pros doing their racket drop and we try to copy it. But the problem is the racket drop itself is not something that we can force. It's actually a reaction of good biomechanics. Let me explain. If I get my racket into this position as I load, I mentioned before that I should be driving my back leg into the floor to rotate my hip into the court. Now, if I do this powerfully, watch what happens to my racket. Naturally, my racket head is dropping. And the reason being is my hip is driving so quickly, the weight of my racket is lagging behind. That is what creates the racket drop. Now, if you try to manipulate the racket and cause the drop by itself, it can become very forced and you're actually losing that impact and the power that you would get from the lag. Now, as I say, this is a super common trait. And what I would say for anybody that's struggling with their racket drop is to try to get their racket into this abbreviated position here and just practice doing what I just did. Get that back hip to turn quickly and just keep this arm fairly relaxed and you'll start to feel that racket dropping more naturally. Now, once you have that feeling of the racket dropping, then you can incorporate more of a serve action. So from here, I'm gonna drive my hips and I'm gonna let the racket flow. Now, this might not look quite like a serve. My contact point is quite low here, but I'm just getting the feeling of letting that racket lag. Do this plenty of times just to get used to the feeling of this disconnect between your hip and your upper body turning. The hips go first. Some players may find that their racket drop isn't as deep as you see the pros on TV, and that's completely normal. The reason the pros get a really deep racket drop is they are super flexible. They have great internal and external rotation in their shoulder and also have great flexibility in their upper back as well, meaning that their chest points up to the sky, allowing that racket to drop even deeper. And so another thing that you can do to help that racket drop to happen more naturally is to improve your range of movement and your flexibility. But generally speaking, it's never gonna be as deep as 
some of these pro athletes as they spend hours and hours on this every single day. But the key is to remember that within your serve, you don't want to be thinking about the racket drop. You want to keep that arm relaxed and focus more on using your legs and your hips to drive into the serve. I would say, Pablo, that the best practice for you to do is just to start in this position, do those exercises that I just showed you, and then introduce a ball. And really focus on just keeping that racket up here rather than starting with your racket here. As from down here, the serve becomes more of a push. But if you keep your racket head here and let the racket lag more naturally, you'll get a much bigger serve. Now, I know that Pablo wanted to focus more on control and accuracy, but any time you're turning your wrist position and manipulating the racket at the back of the swing, you have to undo that work as you get to the contact point. And so by letting the racket flow in its most natural path is gonna help when it comes to keeping your racket face pointing the right direction. Another thing that you can do to really help your serve to feel more smooth and fluid, you may have seen me do on the channel before, and it's using a football sock stuffed with two tennis balls and you're simply going to do your service motion like so. Now the reason this is a really good exercise for anybody trying to make their serve a little bit more fluid and following the right mechanics is that if you have a kink in your serve action the ball will stop and it won't work. So really make sure that you're getting your hitting arm into this position here and letting your hips turn to flow the balls efficiently as opposed to forcing it like this. Here and go. Get to here and go. And you'll see that that drop is happening without me making it. I honestly think this exercise is good for anybody to do. It's a great serve warm up. And I also think for Tom, which we saw in his serve previously, I think this exercise can help you too to make those throwing mechanics slightly more smooth. Now, last but definitely not least, we have Barry. For Barry's serve, he's doing a lot of great things. He's using his legs well, he's got a pretty good setup and his actual hitting action is not too bad either. However, he's not using the continental or the chopper grip, which can create limitations on the serve. Barry's using a grip that lots of players use for their forehand he's somewhere around Eastern and you can see this by the way that he sets up with his racket and his strings pointing downwards. Now for some players I actually wouldn't recommend changing to a chopper grip as it takes an awful long time to change and it feels really horrible when you first do it. However for the purpose of this video I'll explain a little bit about why the continental grip is important and also my best advice for changing to it. Now by using the chopper grip it gives you a lot more opportunity to hit with different spins. You can hit slice, flat, and kick all with the same grip. However, if you're using more of a forehand grip, you're limited really to hitting a flat serve. And if you want to hit spins, you've got to manipulate that wrist position, which isn't ideal for control. Now, the benefit of hitting slice and kick is it can add shape to your serve, i.e. that arc shape, which again allows you to get more serves in without having to slow your racket down. The other real benefit to using the continental grip is a little bit chicken and egg, as it allows you to use proper throwing mechanics when you swing. However, it's proper throwing mechanics that allow you to use the chopper grip. And so this is why people find it so difficult to change as overthinking is one of the biggest problems. Now, when I talk about proper throwing mechanics, it does involve pronation, which I'm actually not gonna cover in this video as it is quite complicated when you get into it, but there is a very, very simple method to practice it properly. And it's simply throwing. I like to use a rocket ball or a Nerf ball as it's a great way to practice your overarm throw with the proper mechanics. But if you don't have one of these, you can simply use a tennis ball. And your aim to practice this is to throw the ball as far as you possibly can with good height. The reason we want to aim our throw high is because that's the trajectory we should be driving up into when we hit a serve. Now, when you first start throwing, you might not throw at a big distance if you're not pronating. If your palm is facing in the same direction as you throw, you'll be very, very limited with power. But what will naturally happen over time if you're practicing your throw is your body will find the right movements. And what should happen is that your palm will face inwards to prepare for the throw. And as you release the ball, your palm will finish facing outwards. This is the body's most natural path to throw at distance. And so, as I say, this will really help you with your throwing mechanics. And if you have good throwing mechanics, using that continental grip is gonna be far easier. Now, I know that that tip might disappoint some people as lots of people love to hear the technical details of how a service struck. But the reality is, if you think too much 
much about the technique, everything becomes forced. A little bit like what I said earlier about that racket drop. As soon as you start manipulating the racket and trying to get it to follow a certain path, it becomes inefficient. For us to use our kinetic chain most effectively, we need everything to flow. And so rather than trying to change grips through undoing old habits, just by practicing throwing is gonna help you to form the right mechanics and in turn is gonna make that grip change feel much, much easier. And so my tip for Barry is to just get out there, throw as many balls as you can, do that for your serve warm up, and then hit your normal serve. And if you want to, make a tiny adjustment to that grip each time you step onto the tennis court, because those tiny 1% changes over time make a big, big difference. So a huge thank you again to Pat, Tom, Pablo, and Barry, and to everybody that sent videos in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned on my Instagram broadcast channel if you want to be involved in future videos, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care.